Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. We were last perched on this outcropping on the edge of a cliff. I'm gonna do a couple of things real quick, mainly picking up... Ooh, that mid-air prosthetic tool is good. Not quite what I want yet. I get Whirlwind Slash so that I can then get mid-air deflection. And you can kind of Devil May Cry 3 jump guard with this. Uh, you do have some iframes on your jump in Sekiro. And then you also get the benefit of kind of feathering the deflect button. And as soon as we drop down a little bit, you felt a presence emerging somewhere in the valley. Everything started to shake really lightly. This big fella was featured just for a little bit in one of the trailers. We're gonna wait for him to look the other way, then crouch in the brush. He's even kind enough to stay distracted long enough. For us to bust ass to this cave. We are not trying to get shit detected by this thing. Oh, I love the way it moves. It's so cool. But incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Kai is just hanging his head over the ledge. Here just under its nose, almost. Then there's a hut while it's not looking. Just want to make sure its head is crooked that direction. There it is! Oh, the noise this thing makes and the way it just... The rash is around. It is so violent. Come on. And it'll try to get one last strike in in here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It'll come close. And it withdraws. Lucky for us, there was an item that we otherwise would have had to double back for. But now that we've stabbed the Great Serpent in the eye and pissed it off enough or scared it off enough to not cover this part of the valley anymore, we can go back for the snap seeds. Something maybe would have helped us for Lady Butterfly, but then again, we didn't have too much of a hard time with her. Also, you can probably tell by now from my voice that I did not escape Pax East unscathed, much like I didn't escape the Snake Counter unscathed. I have a touch of the Pax Plague. But there is no time to be worrying about that. I have another trip coming up in a few days, so... Got a lot of stuff to record to get ready for that second trip. And not a lot of time to hope that I don't come down with laryngitis. <laughs> Spent the past few days since getting home from Boston uh, just chugging down Sunny Delight. I have, ha I have gulped so much of that good, good D into my into my gullet more d than i've ever slurped down before uh supplemented with the fastest i have ever made a doctor's appointment uh 
She thinks I have maybe an upper respiratory infection, so I also have antibiotics for that. One of you, surely. Yeah, this is an animation I don't get to see very often, but there is a ledge grab stealth kill animation. Which is puzzling because there is a dude with a rifle shooting directly at the ledge I'm gripping it. And the other two, the other three, now two, uh, remained oblivious. So this works out so well. So, so well for us. Yeah, poor, poor horse. Who is it, Kokage? Something Shadow? There's a running theme in Ashina of naming your horse something Kage. This is not the only Kage horse that we are- This is not the only Shadow horse uh, we will come across in this episode. Hmm. Yeah, I'm noticing I'm not quite in laryngitis territory yet. But I am in that phase where if I try to speak in anything other than this low tone, it will be extremely nasally. But that low tone, though, it may very well double as the sex voice. Mm. There's another rifleman up here, and then I don't know if this one's going to fully round the corner on me. Mm, I think two of them might round the corner. Which complicates what I want to do. Vis-a-vis -vis, uh, stealth killing the ogre. I would just like to slurp down some more of the D and maybe jam a long sharp thing into his back. And it's not that I'm being salacious, it's just that when I say things with my voice, it always sounds like I'm talking about slow sex. Yeah, that's going to be the kind of episode we have today. Cool, and we can get him without having alerted the other one. We have that suppressed presence as well. This is our mid-air deflection, our chasing strike. Oh, shit. Well, he only just kind of saw a big orange blur in his periphery, so we are totally fine. It's fine. We call do-overs on him. Oh, yes. Good lord. Love this combat system. Just a whole bunch. And now we've cleared out most of the area, we are going to double back for one thing, which is perched up here. Uh, these remnant memories. We managed to drive them back once, but the Interior Ministry's army is far too powerful. And that is why you wish to use the power of my blood. It doesn't matter how much power you obtain. You'll keep on fighting until you're a monster, incapable of feeling pain or fear. I do not wish to corrupt the lives of men. Look at this mountain of bodies. Ashina cannot be defended by normal means. Not anymore. I could never be as strong as you, Lord Genichiro. I do not yet know what it is I should do. It has been a long time since that happened. Wait all you like. It'll do you no good. So this must be post-abduction, that memory happens? We're not trailing behind him too far from the looks of it. My name is Kyobu Masataka Oniwa! Who can hate and die for it? Who can hate to show you the wrath of a man who stood with the Ashina when they took this country. So, Gyobu Oniwa is our second proper boss. 
And this is a really fun one, nowhere near as tough as Lady Butterfly. But just the design of him, of this cool horse riding spear user, I like a whole bunch. And very, very frequently, like right there again, we'll be able to make use of uh, that grapple strike. Because he always is going to try to put distance between you and him before he sets up for his next attack. Especially if you're getting a lot of deflect in on him in a row. Actually, I would dare say this is going too well. We might end up not seeing many of his attacks. Like he is one where the horse just jumps around and tries to stomp you. Oh, that one's good, too! Uh, his horse, by the way, is Onikage, which is also the name of a Tenchu. Uh, I think he's, like, a... Uh, a minor antagonist, like a recurring one. That move pays off so much for this fight. Uh, Yobu has another weakness, which is a prosthetic tool called the Firecrackers. We haven't gotten it yet, but we'll get it pretty soon. He was the keeper of the Ashina Castle Gate. And we also get this mechanical barrel, which is another route by which we can upgrade our prosthetic tools. It's another means of character progression, and another one of these purple clothed uh, ninjas. We fought one of those three years in the past at the Harada Estate. Care to purchase an offering? An offering? Indeed. I sell items to be offered to the dead, so they might rest in peace. From the looks of you, I'd wager you have a lot of blood on your hands. Go ahead. Buy an offering. These are the War Memorial uh, merchants. The Memorial Mobs. You find the departed, you'll find the Memorial Mob wherever your travels take you. Make sure you bring some offerings. We're going to have to dip into our coin purses a little bit, but we haven't had to do so yet. In fact, we haven't had that much use for Sen to this point. Uh, but we can get a bunch of useful stuff from this dude. We're gonna ignore the Dragon's Blood Droplets for now. They are for something else, but we also get our prosthetic tool, which makes a deafening sound frightening to animals, sold by little Robert and his father to raise funds for their travels. Their voyage brought them to Japan, where they would seek the Undying in an attempt to extend Robert's life. This is really good for animal-based enemies. For creating openings. So we got our firecrackers. We can go create a prosthetic out of those. Uh, prosthetic tool, I should say. And... Oh, another purple ninja. Well, we're gonna ignore the dude in the Tengu mask for now. And just grab this real quick. And then the other thing uh, we got, of course, was the gourd seed. You could also reinvest all of your sin into the coin purses. You'll lose a little bit. But if you're dying a lot, it's a worthwhile investment, since you'll lose half for every death. But you won't lose anything if it's all invested in coin purses. Also, we have this little hole up here. Oh shit, I missed the rafter. Well, I guess we're talking to Tengu Man for now. Mm, another rat. Mm. Ah, but those eyes. A starving wolf. Before I kill you, tell me your name. Tell me your name! <laughs> no name to give. You should know me all the same. You die nameless, with no one to mourn you. However, your left arm, 
a prosthetic shinobia. It reminds me of... <laughs> That's it. A one-armed wolf. I like it. Which means Sekiro. That is what I shall name you. Who are you? <laughs> I am the Tengu of Ashina. Come, Sekiro. Care to hunt some rats with me? What? Rats have snuck into Ashina, scurrying about like they own the place. There are all kinds of rats out there, and they must be cut down. Every last one of them. It seems you have a talent for killing. Allow me to help you hone that talent. What'll it be, Sekiro? Will you hunt rats with me? Very well. Excellent. You'll need this if you're with me, Sekiro. A description of the rats that have snuck into Ashina. Speak to the Tengu again once the rats are dealt with. They're assassins from Senpo Temple, short stature, wear bamboo hats. A number of rats are lurking around, last seen around Ashina Castle Gate. What is this? <laughs> the face of a rat, and where it makes its home. Go and kill it. If you do, I will give you something that will aid you in battle. Cool, so we have a side quest Go. from the Tengu of Ashina, who gave us our literal nickname, Sekiro, the one-armed wolf. Before that, it's always just been wolf. Oh, you survived. That accursed Gyobu's finally a corpse, I take it. <clears throat> that changes nothing, you know. There'll be more wars, there'll be more corpses, and deep-seated hatred will run wild. Where's all that hatred go? Haven't you ever wondered? <sighs> Guess not. Guess you haven't. That's why I pity you. And I pitied him. She sounds a little like Genkai. Now then, be gone already. There's no end to war, no matter what this old hag says. Your duties will never change either. That's just how it is. War never changes. Now then, there's you. I'm noticing that in Sekiro, they've stopped forcing you to go back to the well to exhaust every line of dialogue. Uh, usually, NPCs will just say their whole spiel right away. And then if you talk to them again. Uh, they'll just give you a recap of what they had to say, instead of new stuff. I'm still not going to take the chance and not talk to every NPC until they start repeating lines, but I think they've made that quality of life adjustment. It's just too baked into, uh, I guess my schema of the game. So we are going to hunt rats for the Tengu of Ashina. We're going to start off going back to the Ashina Castle Gate Fortress uh, Idol. Because there is one of those smaller dudes that we saw in the tutorial area just hanging out back here. Short stature, bamboo hat. It's about what we have to go on. Almost poisoned. God damn. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, that one. Some of them are actually actually a little bit more. Oh, hey, these are for snap. This is a uh, an herb catalog scrap for snap seeds. Something that, again, we're not going to have the most use for now. There are uses for them outside of the Lady Butterfly fight. Uh, but that's the main big one. Gonna give the gunman the runaround. He's not actually our target here. Uh, we would be going through him either way to move forward. 
Uh, we're not quite ready to go forward just yet. Instead, we're going to jump into this clearing. We have another bamboo hatted guy, another rat, and then two more over there. Illness is indeed grave. The land of Ashina will not last much longer. Even with Genichiro on our side. What about our other mission? Black Hat is fighting like a demon by the Serpent Valley side of the castle. Then that's where we're going next. But keep your wits about you. The Black Hat Badger won't go down without a fight. Alright, so Black Hat Badger in the Serpent Valley. And then two more. Their hats... Oh no, I'm not going to get a kill on this one. Which is going to make this way complicated. Because uh, their big hats act as shields. We have a tool for that. Ooh. But it's a little bit dicey getting the wind-up going on that axe against these enemies in particular. Nope, that's not going to be quite it. We're just looking for one really good opportunity to do this. Break the hat, get the fatal blow. And I think those are all the rats. Uh, for this first leg of the rat hunting side quest from the Tango of Ashina. Who we can now go back to uh, for that reward he promised us. This one, for the, the small amount of work that you have to actually invest into doing it, the payoff is so, so worth it. Just run back up here, and he'll be waiting, waiting right for us. Looks like you've caught yourself some rats. Yes. I knew you had a talent for killing. Wonderful. Here's your reward. Take it! The Ashina Esoteric Text. The text reads like a history of Ashina's battles when young. Ishina uh, fought desperately time and time again, polishing his technique in the blood of his enemies. He consolidated his learning under the Ashina-style name for the sake of his clan's dominance. This is... The ways of the Ashina Blade. It's our school of fighting, but there are no hard and fast rules. You just win your battles. That alone is the most important rule of the Ashina style. I hope it can be of assistance with your rat hunting. And most of all, your own battles you've yet to fight. About the ways of the Ashina blade, it's our school of fighting. You just- I hope- so a third esoteric text, meaning a third skill tree that is accessible to us. For what is really a small amount of running around in just a few fights, that's really, really good. Now, we can continue to move on from here, or we can go back to the dilapidated temple. And we'll do that real quick because we have that prosthetic barrel upgrade as well. I'm glad you've this power. It's said to be a power those who have been repeated. Goodbye. Hey, okay, nothing new from you. Oh, I see you've acquired something quite. Interesting. A mechanical barrel. It's a mechanism that can serve as the very core of the prosthetic. Hand it here. I'll fit it to the arm for you. What difference does the barrel make? With a versatile base such as this, I can use various purifying agents to further hone that fang of yours. Purifying agents? Purifying agents are materials that can be used together with the barrel. Things like gunpowder and scrap metal. So if you find something of that sort, be sure to bring it my way. So this is going to serve kind of as uh, the substitute for crafting in Sekiro. This is why we've been picking up gunpowder and the like, is so that we can uh, take advantage of the prosthetic barrel, which opens up a separate talent tree for uh, our prosthetic tools. Gives them 
more abilities and more power. Like the potential spinning shuriken upgrade, and it goes all the way down. And more unlocks as we get more tools. Could actually grab the spring-loaded firecracker right now, uh, which adds a charge to it. But I don't think I'm that invested in the firecrackers yet. The firecracker tool, by the way, is one of the most overpowered things in the game. Uh, so I With don't plan on fully bill, taking advantage so of it. Possibilities. I can use various purifying agents. To okay, you said this. Some... Yeah, I'm not going to fully abuse that because I think it would make the LP less interesting. But I will show it here and there. Uh, for now, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.